Amanda from Pontes Books here with the vocabulary focus for chapter 20, our, uh, for the Prince and the Pauper. Our vocab word is very important for chapter 20 and chapter 21 because this word is actually one of the characters and we don't really ever learn this character's name. He just goes by this word. So it's pretty important to understand a little bit about what it means and why he happens to be in the middle of the woods um, when Edward stumbles upon him. So our vocab word for chapter 20 is hermit. Uh, and for the picture, I chose a cute little hermit crab, though that really has nothing to do with, I mean, it does have something to do with this word, but unfortunately our character that we meet is not a hermit crab. He is actually a hermit, which can again, connects to the phrase. So. A hermit is someone who isolates themselves, so cuts themselves off from the rest of society. Most of the time, this is a choice that someone makes if they're a hermit. Um, they're not just uh, an out, outlaw necessarily, like they're not, you know, shunned by other people or exiled. Uh, it's more of a choice, but I suppose it could be either way. It is often done for religious reasons. So a lot of times um, either people feel persecuted for their religion and so they choose to go elsewhere so that they can, you know, practice their religion without any criticism, or it's just because their religion itself might disapprove of things that happen in society. So they separate themselves from that. Could be a number of different reasons, but often Characters and people throughout history who are considered hermits sometimes have a religious reason. So some examples, uh, Aramite is really just another synonym for hermit, uh, a recluse. So, and then the example here, Emily Dickinson, sort of. So this kind of applies to that uh, recluse and Emily Dickinson example. It's not exactly the same because someone like Emily Dickinson, she kind of like kept herself inside her house and just talked to very few people, but she didn't necessarily physically isolate herself. She wasn't kind of off in the wilderness. And that's more what we think of when we think of someone who's a hermit, but it's generally the same uh, kind of person. Uh, some non-examples would be someone who's a socialite, extrovert, social butterfly. Those are people who really like being around other people. They really thrive off of the, you know, the attention, um, the excitement, and that is absolutely the opposite of a hermit. So in terms of the etymology, we can trace this word back to uh, Greek. Uh, Aramea means desert, and from Aramos, Aramos, uh, which means desolate. So we kind of see this idea of desert um, and deserting things and something being desolate, kind of tracing back to this word where it's somebody who basically puts themselves in the middle of nowhere. They choose the middle of nowhere, and not typically a desert, but it could be a desert. Um, but we kind of see this word has can be traced through Latin and lots of other languages um, to see how it traces to its modern day meaning. Some sentences, we see our straightforward sentence. The man decided to become a hermit after he decided he disagreed with the laws. So simply, he didn't like the laws of whatever his country or city or whatever was, so he moved and decided to become a hermit. Our actual sentence from this chapter, a black frown settled down upon the hermit's face and he clenched his bony hands with a vindictive energy. So again, the hermit is actually what we use to describe this character. So we don't really have any context clues in this particular sentence, but the word hermit comes up all sorts of times in chapter 20 and chapter 21 because he is that character. Some other forms, um, you don't really see these very often. Most often it's just the word hermit, um, but hermetic could be an adjective to describe someone who is hermit-like. Uh, hermetically would be the adverb and hermitry could be a noun. Something that a hermit practices is hermitry. So then just for fun, I looked up a few famous hermits. So I had not heard of any of these. 
Uh, but these are just a few examples and there are other ones out there as well. So the Hermit of Gully Lake is uh, actually someone named William Kitchener McDonald. And he actually was on a train traveling uh, to somewhere for World War II. And he actually jumped off of this moving troop train in order to, you know, basically get out of fighting. And um, I believe he was Canadian. And even though, or he was in Canada, even though in Canada, they basically pardoned all deserters, he still kind of kept to his, so after he jumped off his train, he kind of went and lived in the middle of nowhere in hiding. And even after he could have been pardoned for that, he still kept to his life in the middle of nowhere. So then we have Masafumi Nagasaki. So this is someone who actually lives on um, an island, sort of Binari Island in Japan. And he lives, from my understanding, nude and alone on this island and only goes into town once a week to get, I think, rice and water uh, is, is it. But otherwise, keeps, keeps to himself. Uh, so then we have Agafya Lykov. Um, so this is someone who is or who was um, a fundamentalist of the Russian Orthodox Church and actually fled from um, the area when Stalin swore to purge all religions and is actually one of the last remaining of her family members who are still alive. And she, I'm not, I think she's still alive, um, lives in Siberia. So, you know, in a very isolated area. And then the last example on here is just St. Hildegard of Bingen. Um, and she was actually offered up to the church by her family and then lived in a monastery separated, again, a little different than a hermit, um, but in terms of uh, doing it for religious reasons, this was definitely one um, and stayed kind of isolated, committed to her church for the rest of her life and ultimately became a saint and was known for uh, having religious visions and things like that. So. Those are just some famous hermits, uh, and that's a little bit about the word hermit itself. Hopefully you learned something. Have a good rest of your day.